my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. Do you need to learn modes? We've been talking about modes and we're not done yet uh, because there are so many questions to something that's relatively simple, but because we're looking at it from different perspectives, it becomes very complex, or it's, so it seems anyway. But <clears throat> do we really l need to learn any of that? Because, you know, where, where's the use of it? And my answer is that you're already learning it. If you are soloing, uh, you know, and learning to, to play solos, then you are learning modes. You're not learning all of them, but you are learning some modes. Just take a couple of examples, uh, because in the following videos, I'm going to show you exactly how uh, three ways in which you can practice modes. Uh, and some of them will be something you already do, because you are practicing modes if you're practicing soloing. So let's say you are, like, you're practicing, you have a song, like, in, you know, uh, in, in, in a blues-based rock, you know? Something like that, right? Okay. Uh, then what you would do is use the E blue scale. This is like E, right? And so you go. Right? And you use that for a certain period of time, and then you start asking, could I add some more stuff to that, right? Could I uh, use some more notes than just the, the, the pentatonic scale? And then somebody comes along and says, you can play E minor Dorian, which is the same thing as to say that you can play the D major scale on top of that sound in the background. Because what you hear in the background is, of course, a bluesy thing, but that bluesy thing is just a minor, basically. That is, uh, just listen to how a minor, the E minor chord sounds. Right? So E blues, E minor blues, is basically just E minor, but with an emphasis on that blue C, right? So you can put the Dorian minor on top of that, and suddenly you're playing Dorian. And, and most people know that, or some people know that, have gotten to that level where they start playing a major scale. But we have to mix it up, right? And why do we have to mix it up? Well, because if I was just playing that D major scale, like, okay, let's try and do that. Let's start and play. And I was to play that D. Then all of the notes don't sound very good. And it doesn't, you know. doesn't sound good, so it's really hard to... Right? Oh, that was uh, totally out. But suddenly it becomes extremely hard to use that seven note tool. Why is that? Because a mode is the seven note scale, the major scale with any of its chords in the background. And then you focus on the notes of the chord, right? So if I had, if I want to play Dorian, then uh, let me see if I can just remove the... Now I have a e, an E minor chord in the background here. And if I start playing, please follow me now. Uh, if I start playing uh, the D major scale, then with a focus on the notes in the background, that is I'm beginning and ending all my little lines, on one of the notes I hear already, using the D major scale. But E minor is derived now from, from the D major scale, right? So now I'm focusing on the those notes, right, of the chord, played separately, and I put in the, the, the remaining note. And 
that sounds good. It sounds Dorian suddenly. It sounds like the Dorian minor. But I can do another thing. I can play the, instead of playing the E minor arpeggio, I can just play the E minor pentatonic. Because the E minor pentatonic is basically just an E minor arpeggio with the seventh added. I'm still playing an arpeggio now. You hear that minor seventh sound? Sounds almost like an arpe or the pentatonic scale. Right? And I'm adding the fourth, so I go. So basically, uh, 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 an E minor pentatonic scale is the same as an E minor seventh arpeggio with the added fourth. So it's a five note arpeggio, right? So when you're using the E minor pentatonic to play over the E minor, and you're throwing in the remaining two notes of the D major scale or the E Dorian scale, then you are in fact playing the Dorian sound. You are reproducing the Dorian sound because you're using the, the, the notes of the E minor pentatonic as the ones you're resting on, and then you use the other two notes from the D major scale as passing notes, which is what we're, talk, we're talking about, right? We focus on the notes of the chord in the background, and when we're playing pentatonic, we just plus a couple, right? But it's still the same activity. Right? And then we add the, the whole scale. Instead of only taking five notes from the uh, D major scale, we take the whole scale. But we do it from the context of focusing on the notes from the pentatonic scale, which is basically just the E minor arpeggio with the added fourth and the seventh, right? So you are, in fact, playing a mode when you're playing any rock song. Or any ACDC. Any ACDC song like that, right? Then you are playing the Dorian sound with that extra uh, sound of the pentatonic scale, which is basically just an arpeggio with a special sound, right? Right? So, so let's say you're, you, yeah, it, it's everywhere because whenever you have a chords in the background and you're playing on top of them, another example before I go and we get to the next videos is that let's say you're playing over a chord progression, you're playing melodic rock, right? You're playing melodic rock here. And you're playing over the A minor. Let's just take the three basic chords again the tonic, the subdominant, D minor, and then the E major, which is the dominant chord of A minor, which is the tonic. And you're playing over that chord progression, right? And I used to really, this one used to be a huge problem for me. So now I. I knew that I could use my A minor pentatonic. Right? It worked really well. And if I, you know, studied each shape a little bit and... And, and I start knowing the notes within that as a five note scale then I could really play over those chords. And it didn't matter what chords from the A minor scale that was whipping by in the background, I could just use the same five notes, right? But then I heard of this minor scale, this natural minor scale. And I started using it, and it sounded like, it didn't sound good, right? So I started using it. Suddenly it was hard, because what is the discipline of playing a mode? It's playing, focusing on the notes of the chord in the background. So I'm playing the A natural minor scale, and then I want to focus on the notes that are being emphasized by the chord. And the chord comes from the scale, is three notes from the scale. And I need to know where those are, right? But I didn't, I didn't have to know that in the beginning. I could just use the A natural minor scale, and then my minor pentatonic on top of it those were kind of a safe zone. Those were the safe notes. So that was the next level for me. Pentatonic. Natural minor. Back to pentatonic. And then out into the note from... Pentatonic. 
it's on it. Natural minor. Okay, I'm going to look funny every time I hit one of the two notes that are in the A natural minor scale. I can do that is because I can take those five notes because it was the same challenge in the beginning with the pentatonic scale right that I had to learn to really use it in a way where I could I kind of knew it so well that I could play the notes that sounded good within that scale based on what I hear, heard in the background so I couldn't just play any note that's I sounded like an amateur when I was just playing up and down but when I started getting it, getting to know it, and I could sing what I played, actually. Right? When I had that much control, because I've been playing up and down that first position shape, and playing a lot of licks in it, then suddenly I could start predicting what that next note would sound like. And so when I had these chords in the background whipping by, I could start... started to be able to actually use those five notes. And what is that? That ability is actually being able to hit the notes that sound good over the chord in the background, which is what a mode is, right? Because I was hitting the notes that sounded really good, so, so I could feel the chord progression in the background, and then use the penitentiary scale and just hit the right note within it so it fit the chord. I, I didn't know what I was doing, but what I was doing was focus on the notes of the chord in the background, <laughs> using my five notes, using a very simple tool and my ears and experience with how, how, how does it sound when I go from that note to that note, and then suddenly I could actually play the modes within the pentatonic scale of what, you know, in the music, right? I hope that makes sense because that's, you know, modes are everywhere. It's when we define modes, and that's the only practical way of defining it, when we define modes as the ability yeah, or the sound of a scale over any of its seven chords, then if that is a mode, then when you're playing and soloing, you must be able to do that. So to answer the question, do I even have to learn modes? Whether you want to or not, you're going to if you want to master soloing. You don't have to master every single mode, every single combination on the basis of arpeggios or pentatonic scales. I'm gonna show you how you can do it, but it's ear training, basically. Most people, you know, either use the pentatonic or the pentatonic in combination with the diatonic, which is just the major slash minor scale. And so they actually play modes, and I'm going to show you in the next video how you can, uh, not the next, but the one after that, how you can use pentatonic scale to also play modes. So. That's the answer. I hope this was valuable to you. And, and you know, because the more angles and the more times we hear this from different examples, different angles, it starts to go, oh, the pieces of the puzzle starts coming together until you finally say, oh, that's pretty. That's easy, right? It's just a, you know, mode is a scale of seven notes, like the diatonic scale, and then any of its chords. And when you combine them and focus on the notes of the chord in the background, then voila, you hear the mode. And so if I'm playing solos, then that's what I do all the time. Whether I do it by it, because I know ah, I need to go to that note, or I know that I'm actually playing the arpeggio and I'm focusing on the actual notes and I can see the shapes of the fretboard. It's the same thing you're doing all the time. I'm going to, you know, shut it now and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it, do it now, do it.